Hi everyone, I'm Raif Darazi, and in this video, I'm going to cover the very recent announcement of the great results of American Gene Technologies AGT103T Phase 1 clinical trial. Don't worry about what all that means just yet, I'll explain, but it is testing for the safety and efficacy of a potential HIV cure. So before we dive right in, um, let me go over a little bit about what American Gene Technologies is. And reading the description from their website, it says American Gene Technologies is a pioneering biotech company headquartered in Rockville, Maryland, that's using gene therapy to cure humanity's most deadly diseases. American Gene is creating the foundation for a fundamentally new approach to medicine. Much like Apple's iOS platform for the iPhone, we're building a gene therapy platform so other scientists can build on its approach to develop new cures, much like software developers creating apps for the iPhone. This will significantly cut the time and costs of developing new drugs for a variety of diseases. So they're not just creating, they're not developing cures alone, they're developing a platform from which other researchers, companies, etc., organizations can develop cures, making the whole process more efficient, it sounds like. Okay, so into the crux of the video, this past Friday, June 9th, today is Saturday, so it was just yesterday for me, Jeff Galvin, the CEO of American Gene Technologies, announced live on YouTube a summary of the results of their AGT-103T Phase 1 clinical trial. As stated on their website, AGT-103T is a single-dose autologous cell therapy delivering gene therapy modified HIV specific CD4 T cells to persons with HIV disease. I know it's a mouthful. Um, here, I'll, I'll try to break it down a little bit for you. So autologous simply means that it's sample tissue or cells taken from your own body. And then that sample is then reintroduced into your body after it's been modified. So CD4 T cells, white blood cells, have been taken from a person, modified through gene therapy, and then injected back into that same person, hoping to create some sort of result. So one of the first things that Jeff starts off by saying is that they were able to accomplish both safety and efficacy in this phase one clinical trial. So starting with safety, they had seven participants in the uh, clinical trial. 100% of them did not experience any serious adverse health events. So that was like a big um, milestone for them to accomplish that. And then the second part is efficacy. They took out the CD4 cells of these seven participants, modified them through gene therapy, and then put them back in their respective bodies. And the cells did behave the way that they were hoping and expecting. They were designed through the gene therapy to actually fight HIV. The problem is with HIV is that it cripples CD4's ability to do its job and, and actually kills the CD4 cells in our body. So they were able to change the CD4 cells, the white blood cells, in a way that it was actually able to trigger an immune response, an immune cascade, as Jeff phrased it in his announcement. And even without having them remove their antiretrovirals from their regimen, they were still able to notice an effect that these newly modified CD4 T cells were having on the body and the immune system response. So they were super happy with, with the results thus far, but then they decided to ask the seven participants who would be willing to go off of their ARVs so that they could continue to study the effects of these modified CD4 cells on the body. Six participants decided to go off of ARV, and when they did, they had a normal immune response to HIV. And when I say normal, I mean a, res a response to HIV. Whereas those of us, like me, if I were to go off ARV, my immune system wouldn't respond normally like it does to other diseases. So what happens is the CD4s actually tell the CD8 cells to attack the virus. Usually, I'll use myself as an example, when I had HIV and I was not on ARVs because I was not diagnosed, I didn't know at the time, my CD4s were steadily declining. And at the same time, my CD8 cells were doing nothing because the CD4s were being killed off and they also weren't telling the cd8s to attack the hiv that's what usually happens but these modified cd4s in these participants these six participants who agreed to go off of arvs were behaving in a way that was good 
the CD4s remained stable, they weren't dying off, and they were telling the CD8s to attack the virus. Then Jeff asked the remaining six participants if they would be willing again to go into ATI or analytic treatment interruption, which just means that they were taking off their normal treatment, your normal ARV regimen, in order to further study what was going on in their body. Of the six remaining, four participants agreed to do it. All four participants had significant viral suppression and immediate immune response. Some had a viral suppression, as Jeff said, of two logs or 100x less virus than what they had in the previous ATI when they were taken off of their ARVs. So even a while later, I'm not sure the exact amount of time between the two ATIs, their body was continuing to respond to the virus in a healthy way, which is, you know, of course, really positive for their findings. There will be an article coming out later this summer that will explain the data they collected as well as their findings. And the next step is rolling into phase two pending FDA approval, which they're pretty confident that they'll get. There's no reason why they wouldn't. And in that, they will be optimizing this same protocol. So that's that's pretty substantial, exciting news. Um, it was seven participants. It's not a huge amount of people, but I assume that in phase two, they would expand that. And um, I don't know anything about, about the participants. I'm curious to know if it was male, female, just male, you know, what was their ethnic backgrounds, things like that. A lot of times in these um, studies and clinical trials, there is a lack of diversity in that sense. So I'd be interested to know more about that. Maybe that's something we'll get in the, um, the published data later this summer. Okay, and then the next big announcement that Jeff via... American Gene Technologies made was that they are rolling out a completely new company called AdImmune. I'll put the logo up here so you can see that. And it's entirely separate from American Gene Technologies. And its purpose solely is to focus on therapies that treat and cure HIV. Whereas AGT addresses multiple different kinds of diseases, AdImmune will be focusing 100% of its energy and its resources on HIV cure research. Cool. So it'll be really interesting to see how that develops too. I've been following, you can see, find their socials um, on social media. They've created accounts for Adimmune on most social places. Uh, I'll link those down in this description below so you can find that there as well, as well as American Gene Technologies. And then that way, hopefully you can follow along just as I am. And then once they announced the new company Adimmune, they then focused an, a bit of time on um, in new investment opportunities. They are partnering with an investment firm based in New York called 10X Capital, whose CEO is Hans Thomas. The implication is that once institutional investors are interested, which they are at this point, as evidenced by 10X Capital when it, willing to partner with them. They're, you know, a um, big investment firm that's on Wall Street, and I know that they're listed on the NASDAQ. And um, once that happens, you get institutional interest it's a good sign of the sentiment that investors perceive that there's a viable product here, that at some point in the near future, there can be, there's profit to be made. And I know, I know it can be an uncomfortable topic to address financial incentives when it comes to something like HIV and the fact that it's been a source of so much pain and heartache and trauma for so many millions of people around the world. But it's important to acknowledge and be aware that companies put in years and years, sometimes decades of research, experimentation and resources into their work, and they should be compensated for that. Without some kind of financial incentive, private companies wouldn't be able to stay in business. Yes, the, you know, the U.S. government and nonprofits could um, potentially finance something like that. But for a private company to do that, they need to be able to have um, financial incentive. So um, I'm all for it. I think it's great. It's good news. I do, as always, want to stress a bit of cautious, hopeful optimism. You know, it's easy to kind of let the cart get in front of the horse, especially when it's something that you um, are personally invested in. You know, it, it impacts millions of people around the world. And it's it's very emotional for a lot of us. And like I said, it, so many people have experienced trauma when it comes to HIV. So the idea of a cure 
it's easy once you find this little morsel of hope to kind of jump on that and get overly excited and and forget that you know a lot of the, a lot of these things um, don't necessarily pan out or they may pan out but it's going to take probably a lot longer than we hope it it would that's just the reality of it but that doesn't mean that we can't celebrate and be excited about the milestones along the way and speaking of milestones adamian actually has some milestones listed on their website um, they had a countdown from like 10 to 0 and we've been through I'll show you 1098 here starting with the clinical trial being allowed by the FDA then phase 1 began and then the first participant enrolled in October of 2020 and then we moved into milestone 7 which is the first product passes release testing and then 6 the first patient was infused with their own modified CD4s um, five, three patients with no serious adverse events, DSMB accelerates trial, and then four, first five patients show critical efficacy markers. It's kind of cool that they're showing the progress as it, as it goes along. And then here, upcoming milestones, first human efficacy, phase two approval, phase two completed. And then, uh, by the way, if you hear it snoring, that's Dookie snoring next to me. Uh, and then finally, zero biologics license agreement. You can check that out on their website. I'll have links, for, like I said, down below. You can check out Adamune. You can check out American Gene Technologies. Um, head up their socials. Follow them so you can um, stay up to date on the latest. Last year, I did actually, Jeff, the CEO of AGT, invited me on his channel for an interview, so you can see that on their YouTube channel. I'll put a link to that in the box down below as well. Also, let me know if you're interested in having Jeff Galvin on for an interview. He's the CEO of American G Technologies. I think he's also um, leading the charge on Adimune as well. So I'll, I'll bring him on, we'll do an interview. We can talk about AGT, we can talk, talk about Adimune, we can talk about these latest findings with the clinical trial. Whatever other questions, comments you guys might have, please put them in the comments below. I'll take a look. Maybe I'll include it in the interview. And um, I'll also put a link to the official announcement that he did on YouTube. That link will be found below as well. Okay, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this little announcement update video. I would like to do, and I'm working towards wanting to do maybe weekly news updates and just kind of aggregate a bunch of the latest HIV news that I find online through articles, Reddit, etc., and present them in a weekly video. That's that's a big lift for me. It's a big goal, but I'm letting you know that's a goal that I'm working towards. It might start out that I'll do it once every month or once every couple weeks, whatever, but the goal is to, to work up to doing that once every week so we can kind of keep this conversation rolling. All right, like this video. If you liked it, subscribe. If you haven't already, hit that bell. You know what to do. Share this with anybody who might find this exciting, useful, hopeful, or reassuring, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Cheers.